Hi and welcome to this section, section 3.7, where I would like to look at matrix inversion. So we start straight away by saying that if alpha is a non-zero scalar um, for each number beta, we have alpha and beta are non-zero scalars. Um, the equation, the equation, uh, the equation that is given by alpha x equal to beta has a solution which is unique and which is given by x equals to 1 over alpha times beta which is the same as saying alpha inverse i mean the inverse of alpha times beta okay uh to prove that uh this is a solution to this equation we just plug it in and then make sure that the right hand side is equal to the left hand side i.e we are going to say that alpha times um, our solution which we have said is alpha e i mean the inverse yeah alpha inverse times beta that is the x okay this is our x and then we say that this should equal to beta so we know that we can just write this uh, associativity and then we can say um, this is alpha and then this is alpha inverse and then times the beta and then we equate to beta but we know that a number times its inverse gives us the identity which is one times the beta and then equals to beta and then we see that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side okay then uh, we prove uniqueness uniqueness follows because we can say that um, to prove uniqueness uniqueness we will say that if um, x1 and uh, x2 as are both solutions to our equation alpha x equals to beta okay then uh, we are going to say that that implies that if they are unique that means that alpha times x1 uh, should be equal to alpha times x2 and both of these should equate to beta oh uh, let us uh, rather write it this way and then say this equals to beta and then this equals to alpha x2 it's the same okay then we are going to say here that uh, alpha inverse okay because we already know that the solution here is going to be alpha inverse okay not as such alpha inverse we can just multiply um through okay all sides with uh we multiply by alpha inverse so we are going to say that alpha inverse and then we have alpha and then x1 should be equal to alpha inverse times um, alpha times x2 times alpha times x2 and then we know we can do that we can do that and then we know that um, our the inverse times the quantity itself gives us the identity and then the identity okay in this case we we'll write one the identity okay because we didn't say that these are matrices and i should yeah okay here i wrote one that's fine okay then this this the inverse times the quantity itself gives us also the identity which is one times x2 and then we end up showing that if x1 and x2 were two different solutions they cannot be different in other words we have unique solutions okay so um now well given this we are going to define matrix inversion uh, for matrix inversion now and then say we are now going to define matrix inversion by saying that for a given square matrix a of dimensions n by n and another square matrix n 
I mean b of that dimension please take note that we are saying for a given square matrix okay we are going to we shall later on emphasize that matrix inversion is defined for only square matrices uh, so for a given matrix a okay square matrix a and b that satisfies the conditions whereby a multiplied by b gives us the identity of order n and okay the reverse that b times a gives us the identity of order n then we say that b is the inverse of a we say b okay is the inverse of a so if we have a matrix a of um, square matrix a of this order n by n and uh, if we can find this matrix b such that a times b gives us the identity and b times a gives us the identity then we can say that b is the inverse of a and we write it as saying that b equals to a inverse okay so note that not all square matrices are invertible that is important to note we are going to say that not all square matrices are invertible okay maybe i i don't remember i i don't think i said invertible invertible means that this one here if the if you can find the inverse or we can say if the inverse exists then your matrix is invertible okay so we are saying that not all square matrices are invertible okay for example eg a very trivial example is the zero the zero matrix i.e a matrix of all zeros okay it is not invertible we shall maybe later on see how we can compute the inverses of a matrix but this is just a very trivial example that's this matrix here you cannot find it's what it's inverse okay for obvious reasons if it is not a matrix of course you cannot find the inverse because um yeah division by zero is not that is not possible uh not all square matrices are invertible the zero matrix is a trivial example however there are also many other uh, non-zero matrices which are not invertible then we say that um, if your matrix is invertible okay then we s we have a term we say that it is non-singular right and then if your matrix is not invertible if it is not invertible we are going to say that your matrix is singular okay a singular matrix is that one which has no inverse i.e it is no it is not invertible and then a non-singular matrix is one which is invertible i.e whose inverse does what exists okay so we shall stop at that and then in the next section we shall look at some more properties of the matrix inverses